The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Earnestly Speaking Podcast coming to you on January 21st, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, I missed you guys. It's been two weeks since we did a podcast, and you're probably wondering why. Well, unless you don't follow me on social media, you know why. I mean, you probably don't know why if you don't follow me on social media, because I haven't done a show in two weeks. Last podcast I did was, I think it was the wild card. It was previewing previewing wild card weekend with my good friends Big Jim and James Neese and Kyle Nash, Um, and... I promise you guys, we'll be, every Thursday we will be we will be doing a preview each weekend into the playoffs, concluding in the Super Bowl. Well, unfortunately, the day after that podcast, my wife woke up on Friday morning with uh, her head head was congested. She was feeling a little sick, and as you guys know, I had. Recorded a podcast, a solo pod, I think the same day or the day before, um, entitled Chaos. Um, and I said that I, I was feeling a little under the weather, but it felt like more like a slight cold, allergies, which I always have, allergy attacks all the time. That's that's normal with me. <clears throat> and um, that morning, um, she woke up feeling a little icky. Um, and that whole week, she had kept telling me, asking me to go check myself to get tested for COVID. And I'm like, and I, as I said in the pod, uh, why? Um, I feel fine. I mean, this is like, this is, I feel normal. Like, I wasn't feeling fatigued. I mean, I had a little bit of head, a little bit of head cold, but that's not out of the, out of the normality of whatever. I was having allergy attacks, but I haven't had that for the last decade or so. So, you know, I it didn't feel any different. So I didn't, I didn't feel motivated to go get tested. And she called. I called. Uh, I had called out of work that um, that that Wednesday prior because I wasn't feeling well, of course, um, just to get healthy. And then <clears throat> that morning, Friday morning, we uh, she was like saying, "I don't know, I should get tested." And we called our bosses, HR, maybe we even told. I told my HR, "Listen, a." Um, just letting you know, I was a lot under weather this week, but I wasn't uh, not too sure if, you know, you know, just letting you know, and do you think it's COVID related? She, she is, and she said, no, I, don't, I doubt that. You know, it doesn't sound like it. Her boss, same thing too, said same, same thing also. So I was at work on, on, on Friday, like normal. My wife, <laughs> however, and thank God she did this because she is very paranoid about these things. She went ahead and got tested anyway, just because she wanted to. And before you know it, I get a, I get a text while I'm working, about two hours in to my shift. Uh, honey, I tested positive for COVID. Oh shit! So obviously, if she tested positive for COVID, that means I myself has not been exposed to it, and our two children, our two kids, our two boys, Eli and Logan. So. I immediately panicked. Well, I'll say panic. That's a little too much. I told my boss immediately, uh, listen, a uh, little emergency here. Um, I think I got to go because my wife just texted me and she tested positive to COVID. So, of course, I had to go. go, And I went home to go take care of her and settle down there. And then we all decided to go get tested, myself and our two boys. And guess what? All four of us came back positive for COVID-19. So, obviously... I've been off the grid with this podcast or anything media. Well, other than writing, I've been writing a lot the last couple of weeks. Um, I've been off the grid for the last two weeks. So that's where I've been the last two weeks. Um, and the experience, you know, I will say this. It, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't like I was like bedridden. Although I did have moments where I had to, you know, because you're told to relax, to get rest because, Fatigue's a thing, and if you work too much to do do things, too much things while having the COVID nineteen, you're gonna wear yourself out, and that's not gonna help. Your body won't heal quicker. So there are moments where, like, even when I try to do things, after a while, I feel fatigued and tired and all that. <clears throat> and they, they, 
you know, it really peaked for me and for my wife too, but for me especially, day four through about eight or nine was the peak of the for me. Day four through to, to, uh, the uh, day eight, day nine of the virus, where I had head cold. Um, one of the common things too with this is that if you breathe, breathe in, like say it's like this cold air through your nose, and it goes like into the back of your eyelids, and it triggers a headache. That's pretty actually pretty common for people I've spoken to that also had the coronavirus as well. That they had that same thing where they they they're breathing and it's cold air through their nose to, into the nostrils, and it goes to the back of their eyelids, and then it kind of triggers a headache. I had that a lot. That was really annoying. Um, for me, it was mostly head cold. And by the way, I got sicker. <laughs> um, I ended up getting worse than the week before. Um, so I had that. I had body aches and a lot of headaches. And the headaches obviously triggered from the, I was telling you a while ago, um, the breathing in, the, it felt like cold air. It was not really cold air, but it was just felt cold and it goes to the back of the eyelids and it triggered the headache. So I had that, body aches and all that. And I started feeling a lot of fatigue and, and during the first week into the second week. Um, so I've been out of work for two weeks, um, and uh, we got better. We've gotten better. We're actually better now. Um, we still feeling better. Probably about day nine, day ten. We start seeing the light end in the tunnel. Still a little fatigue, a little aching here and there. Um, I noticed too, also for me and but my wife also too. We felt the worst in the morning. Like when we wake up in the morning. That's when we felt our worst. We felt our worst. Um, when we were waking up in the morning to the point where we stayed in, you know, slept in, we, there were days where we would just like not get out of bed till like one, two o'clock. Thankfully, my seven year old son, Eli, you know, has been able, has been getting up, getting up to school without a problem. And by the way, my kids pretty much didn't feel anything like other than one day, which was, I think day two where my seven year old Eli, um, he felt fatigue a little bit. He was kind of like on the couch the entire day, relaxing. Other than that, he he he's been fine. Our youngest, Logan, three year old, he's been bouncing off the freaking walls the entire two weeks. Like I feel like he got harder to handle. It could be because of us not being able to match up to his level. Obviously, being in a weakened state, but he was harder to handle through this. He he had like a, I think I got a slight fever, low fever, for like half a day, if that, and that was it. And we were on top of that. We were on top of uh, taking the auction, checking the auction levels. We were, you know, obviously checking temperatures and all that. It was it was a drag for a little while. It was tough, and we had a, and the thing is, you couldn't go anywhere. So the only thing we ever did in the two weeks <clears throat> was you know, target orders, you know, curbside orders. Uh, the occasional drive was very, very light on un- very not as unlike when we were quarantined last year when the pandemic started. Although we were never sick, we were actually you know we didn't do much of that. So a lot of my time outdoors was taking the kids out for a quick walk or to get some to get some um, sunlight, of course, and take my dog out. So there wasn't a lot going on not on on that front really. <clears throat> Uh, but today we all feel better now, obviously, uh, we went in to get tested today. Um, all four of us came back negative, all four. So I'm returning to work tomorrow. Uh, my wife is returning to work in a few days. Um, good because of a schedule. Um, so we're going to start in and get back to normal. I need, I need to get a haircut. Probably do that after this podcast. Um, but I want to thank people. I want to thank people. Who supported and prayed for us and has kept us in your thoughts these two weeks. We didn't I didn't announce anything to you know publicly to people until like probably day five into it. And my wife really honestly didn't want really didn't want to say anything publicly initially because she she's very private. But I told her and she agreed um that, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to say something publicly at some point is because I, if people had questions to ask me about how this, how this, how do you go through this? How do you, what symptoms looking for and all that? If I can share some information of of my experience, the the, the COVID experience, if you will, um, I can be of help. You know, I want to do that. But I want to thank a lot of people uh, who helped out. I want to thank my, especially my sister Christina, um, who's, who lives in Connecticut, but she sends us a ton of shit. Ordered like tea. 
a uh, couple of things here to help us out a couple uh you know like zinc and pills and stuff and things to help us get better she was so on top of it and she was doing that all from another state she I didn't even ask her she just did it she's a, she's a caring person that way i love her so much for that she's amazing so thank you chrissy for that especially for just stepping in and helping us out and really this being you know this being that sister who's always concerned and really shows it she's, she's an empath you know and uh, i love her for it so thank you so much uh thank you to my my cousins uh dana and errol who bought us dinner for one night uh, or actually it ended up being lunch because I, I got it earlier but you know got us two days one night uh one afternoon when i was craving it they offered us uh, uh <clears throat> lunch appreciate you guys for doing that uh, a bunch of friends. My my brother in law Parker, who uh, got us a couple of, uh, the first couple of days when we couldn't really go anywhere, she he picked up all our orders from Target. I appreciate it. Um, uh, one of my wife's friends, Kristen, who uh, Kristen, who uh, got us lunch also that same day. Um, we got a couple of friends that got us stuff and you know ordered lunch for us and you know just checked in and. You know, just make sure we're okay. You you know, you guys are. I mean, I I consider and mention only names in here. I won't do that, but because it's right now, it's it's very random. But I want to thank all you guys for really stepping in, um, and just showing that you care. You know, I I think people. You know, we. I know in this world, we sit here and like, "Eh, whatever. It's just what it is. We'll do our own thing. But I think people when when, and I really saw that a lot in these last few weeks. You know, when people really reach out, just to say hi. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to get me anything. Just, just to check in and say hi. You know, just to, you know, say, hey, are you are doing all right? I'm, I'm thinking about you guys. Offer this, you know. It makes me feel good. And, and and anybody will feel good about that. Just feeling like they, everyone wants to feel like they're cared for and that they're thought about. And that's a natural feeling to have. And I'm blessed to have a lot of people in my life and I've always known that, of course, but when it actually happens in a situation where it could be dire, now thank God it wasn't dire. Thank God we had a relatively, I'm not gonna say easy two weeks, but it was a, it was a, was this bad? It was okay. We we got through it, and I'm thankful for that. Um, and people reached out. My my friend Ron, Ron Goodwin, stepped in, you know, to help me out, let me know how, what to expect, encouraged me to rest. Uh, and all that. Thank you, Ron, for doing that. Especially, you know, a lot of, everybody checked in, and I appreciate it, man. I mean, we all appreciate that. My family is indebted to you, all you guys. You know, um, but yeah, um, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back on the podcast. I got a little nervous because I, you know, when you do something that you love, it doesn't matter whether it's sports or music or this. You know, when you start, you kind of get off the grid for a little while. It you start to feel like, how do I get back to it? Like even for me, two weeks to me is a lot. Like, and I I've done in the past where I've not done a show, done a show for a week or so, or two weeks or so, even a month, and then I feel this weirdness getting back into the, into the groove of doing the show again because you get so used to the repetitiveness of it. Once you break it up, it's like okay, now what? When you get back to it, it's like okay, this feels weird and feel new again. And I'll be honest, with you jumping on here today and doing this podcast, I was a little nervous. Then again, I'm always nervous on podcasts. I don't know why. I, I feel like when you that's a good thing though when you're nervous, because you feel like you care about it. And you still put the effort in. You still put the you know, it feels like when you're nervous about it, you, you really, really wanted wanted to do well. And, you know, I've been doing the show ten years. This year is ten years by the way, ten year anniversary of the podcast. And I still give it give you more of a shit about it now, probably even than I did back in t- two thousand eleven. You know? So, again, thank you to everyone who, again, like I said, you you know who you are for stepping in, supporting, praying, thinking of us. Like I said, if, I love you all, you guys, for do, for doing that. And I, I feel that's the thing I think we came away with this. My wife and I were talking about it today. We came up, I came away with this. We felt loved. We felt loved. And I appreciate that. I really do. So. That's that. All right, my fifteen minutes of a COVID talk. <laughs> um, we officially have a new president. Yesterday was the inauguration of uh, one Joseph R. Biden. 
So I guess Trump won't be president first January 20th. I was told so, but I guess not. <sighs> I'm not going to pick on the Trump supporters. I'm not going to do that. A lot of my friends, you know, there's still people. We disagree a lot on, on that topic, of course. I'm, I'm, I'm not some damn liberal. I'm not even liberal. But we do disagree on the whole idea. If not, this election was stolen from Trump. I don't agree with that at all. I already made that clear in the episode before this one or before the last one. We're going to get into that. Um, but I don't, like I said, I wrote a little piece on the site, which is back, by the way, earnestspeaking.net. Wrote a little quick little blog on the end of the Trump presidency. Gave my thoughts about it. Didn't get too much into detail about the part about the politics of it all. This is about trying to return back to civility and normalcy. We're already a day in. We're a day in the Biden administration. Almost two days. Well, day 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 and a half. What do you call it? And I'm pretty bored. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. I've been saying for the last five years since. Trump was elected in 2016 and inaugurated in 2017 that part of the problem I had with Donald Trump being our leader was that I need government in the background. I don't need the president in my face every freaking day. And for the record, that's not necessarily his, his fault either. For the record, the media, both sides of the aisle, whatever you... You're conservative or liberal. They overcovered Trump. Now, obviously, Donald Trump is a little different. It's a bit of an anomaly because he's a celebrity. You know, he's a he's a guy that was known, made his digs, obviously, in real estate and whatnot, and then became a really even bigger celebrity. So it's, there's an anomaly there. I get that. But at some point, we need to turn the volume down. And he didn't help either. But the media sure as hell didn't help as well. Okay. You're already seeing day and a half, two days into the Biden administration, the volume is being turned down, and that's a good thing. Doesn't mean that the things, the secret things, have happening because there's still information out there. But I don't need to hear every little thing that goes on. Every little thing. What did Trump say today? What did Trump do today? Who did Trump insult today? Which me remember pissed him off. I passed that, man. I'm, I'm happy for that. And, and look, I'm someone who who loves chaos too. I, like, don't get it wrong. There's parts of this I miss with Trump. Trump is easy content. Trump was easy content for this podcast for the last couple of years. And this is not not even a political podcast. This is most mostly or oh, heavier sports. It's more. It's definitely variety now. But even in 2017, when we were doing mostly sports, he's Trump got a lot of burn on this podcast. Because he intersected that world too on top of that. You know what I'm saying? So, we're now in a Joe Biden era. The inauguration is fine. I liked it a lot. It, I, I mean, give, considering the fact that no one could be there because of obviously because of COVID and the heightened security, they pulled off a great, great, great inauguration. I actually teared up a little bit when Biden got. Uh, sworn in, not because I was because of him being sworn in, big, but Joe Biden. Like, say what you want about Joe Biden's politics, whatnot. You may like it. That's fine. You're allowed to. That's what makes America great. Having differences, respecting differences. Okay, I'm a centrist, so I I I have a lot of people who disagree with, with me because I I piss up with the right and left. Just for the record. But because Joe Biden, to me, at the core of it all, is a decent guy. He's a nice guy. Like, he's an honorable guy. He, this guy has gone through a lot in his life. Lost a wife. Lost a kid. His his son, Bo, lost him to, to brain cancer a couple years ago. He's gone through a lot. A lot of tragedy. And you can see that. The closest of his family. You see, when they were all, his kids and grandkids all there, you know, walk with him through the, you know, through the, the city, up to the White House, and, and, and beyond that. You can see the closeness there. You can see that. And I think, you know, you know, when he when he turned down the volume and talk about policies and stuff and he threw it out of the window and you get down to the core of a human being, he's a nice guy. It's hard to not like him. And by the way, Joe Biden wasn't my first co- first choice. I wanted Andrew Yang to be president. I I was the, I was part of the Yang gang. 
So it's, it's not that, you know, oh, Joe Biden, yes. Joe Biden flags and Joe Biden, you know, stickers on my car. No, 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 no. And you won't see that either. I don't do that stuff. I don't do that. I don't idealize politicians. They work for me. We the people. You know what I'm saying? And I think we've lost that in the last... Even in some degree, even even the Obama years too, we got a little bit of that. Um, although I won't say Obama di- di- wasn't as bombastic in the same way Trump was with it. <clears throat> the supporters somewhat too, but not. It was a little toned down version of that. It's nice to have boring again. I'm okay with boring for once. You know, we need the volume turned down. We need we we need to be decent to each other. Yes, we disagree on certain things. That's fine. Yes, we may disagree on climate change. Yes, we may disagree on 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 not necessarily abortion, but you know things that that matters to. That's fine. But I'm going to respect your opinion, even if I don't agree with you. It's okay. It's a lot of conservatives I agree with. A lot of conservatives, I, I, they feel, that, you know, a lot of conservatives who don't feel like they're part of the process now, they feel like they'd be muted. And some some of their argument is warranted. You know, big tech is mostly left-leaning. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a secret, dude. That's not, that's not a secret. And, and, some, and some of their argument is warranted. Some of their, some of their concerns are warranted. I'm not comfortable with the, all the, the censorship and whatnot. Even when Donald Trump got suspended and, and from from Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and all that. Yeah, did it help to be to, to turn down the volume a little bit? Yeah, it did help. Am I am I like? Do I actually think it's healthy? Do, do, do I like the fact that he's off? Nah. I have a I have a bit of an issue with the censorship part of it. But again, these are small comp. I get the other side argument. Yes, these are private companies, but there's got to be standards too. So we'll see. Um, look, like I said, not a Trump guy. I wish him well. Wish his family well. I don't wish ill will to him, obviously. Although I'll tell you right now, this it's going to be a lot of um, uh, things. I mean, if we to believe that he'll be sued, if he'll be you know ch- you know charged with things, there's a lot of things that's probably going to happen to him in post presidency. We'll see. We're not done with Trump yet. Not by a long shot. We're not done with Trump yet. But I tell you what, though, it's weird not having him on Twitter the last two weeks, and it's been really quiet. Like he's because it's not on Twitter anymore. It's hard to know what he's doing. Because even before you came president, he was always on Twitter. So, anyway, what else I missed the last two weeks? So the Brooklyn Nets are the most interesting team in the NBA right now. Yeah, we're talking sports now. Sorry. <laughs> Some people in this podcast who like to hear my personal stories and, you know, some of my political jargon, but they don't really like sports. This is probably part of the podcast because like, these guys say, ah, okay, I'm done. Hey, sportsy guy is back. No, but seriously, Brooklyn Nets are the most interesting team in, in the league right this year. Obviously, you know, Kevin Durant's return, start of the year with Kyrie Irving, and then they trade for James Harden in those two weeks while I was out with COVID. I couldn't react to it. This is one of the things I hated. I couldn't react to COVID, uh, to James Harden's uh, trade to Brooklyn. Um, meanwhile, Kyrie Irving has been out the last couple of weeks. He's supposed to, he's, he came back last night, though, as Cleveland in the loss. And I've been critical. I actually wrote a piece on this on my blog, too, as well, you know, why I, I think I'm skeptical of the Nets. Now, let me be clear, and I said this before the season started, when the rumors started about Harden going to Brooklyn. If... The combination of James Harden and Kevin Durant was the only thing you had at Brooklyn. I feel confident in them going to the finals this year. I don't believe in the threesome because uh, for a lot of reasons. But all three guys, for the most part, need the ball to be effective. I will say Kevin Durant maybe less because Kevin Durant does play well off the ball. He's a little bit, a little bit unselfish to the three guys. James Harden is a good passer. so But he, he's still mostly effective with the basketball. Kyrie Irving, the same thing. And he added in Kyrie Irving's behavior and his odd behavior off the court. Now, he apologized uh, today about for being away. Um, he had a couple things, issues he had to take care of. I, look, I'm not going to get this in, into all that. I'll just say this much. The optics were bad for those two weeks. You know, the optics were bad for a reason he was out for. I don't know. But I think also because Kyrie is the third wheel now. Because Kyrie Irving's the third wheel. James Harden's a better player than he is. That's, that's, that's the truth. I don't believe in Kyrie Irving to be the guy because I've seen enough. The Boston year, the one Boston year he was there, 
was all I needed to see, the leadership, the lack of leadership of Kyrie Irving. I'm not going to call him a cancer. I don't like using that word because it's cancer. It's a, it's, it's a really bad word. But I feel Kyrie Irving is not, unless Kyrie Irving accepts the third world, th- the third, the, the third role, the third, the, th- the number three role, um, basically being what do they say? Not he's not Robin, but he's uh, Alfred the Butler. <laughs> yeah, Alfred the Butler accepts that role. Fine, it's cool. Um, but I just he needs he can't be the top two guy in that big three from the win this year. In discussion. Kevin Durant's the best player of the three. It's not close. Kevin Durant might be MVP this year, too, for the record. He's playing phenomenal. James Harden is fun as good already. They've, took, they've taken off. With Harden and Durant alone, they've taken off already. They're probably going to win the East. But Kyrie Irving, it gets a little skeptical because Kyrie Irving, again, between the behavior, the weird behavior and the basketball fit. It's only one basketball, man. And look, they also gutted their roster, too, to get Harden. You know, a couple of nice pieces they don't have anymore. You know, Karis LeVert and, and um, was it Jared Allen? A couple of pieces they lost. Got guys who, who would have been major contributors if this team goes far in the playoffs. I don't know. But the East is also not as dominant as I thought it would be this year. Uh, certainly Miami's slow start that doesn't help. We'll see how they recover. My Miami Heat, of course. Uh, Boston's good, but again, they can be had, I think. Milwaukee's really good, obviously. Um, Toronto, obviously, is falling off the planet. Um, <clears throat> so, maybe it will be a little easier. Philadelphia is still pretty good, but I don't, like I said, I don't trust Simmons and MB long term. I don't. So, maybe it is Brooklyn's time to shine. Even with Kyrie. I don't know. I'm skeptical, though. I really am. But, they're going to be an interesting case study. We'll see how this goes. <clears throat> Looking forward to watching it. I'm still coughing. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Anyway. Um, what other sports thing? Well, I actually got two more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and all the all the, all the uh, anti sports listeners of this podcast like fuck EJ. Could you stop with the sports already? Hey, I haven't talked sports in a, couple, in a while. Stop it. It's been two weeks, man. Come on. Um, but uh, in in the midst of all the inauguration stuff, I was I was watching yesterday. Philip Rivers retired yesterday from the Indianapolis Colts. His one season in the Indianapolis Colts. Um, he did play 16, I think, 16 or 17 seasons in, in, with the Chargers. Um, and the big, of course, the big debate with that is, of course, is Philip Rivers a uh, Hall of Famer? This argument is it's weird. It's like Eli Manning, too, when he, when he retired two years ago. Is he a Hall of Famer? Well, last year, not two years ago. COVID makes COVID makes everything feels like as as multiple years. <laughs> but it, it's triggered a discussion. You know, Phil Rivers. You know, is he Hall of Famer? Um, the numbers. It, it and it, and it, here's the thing. Here's the problem with the Hall of Famer argument. Now, everything is boiled down to numbers. Now, everything is shifted in numbers. We we. You know, people forget also too that this, this is an individual award. It's not like okay, well, he didn't go to enough. Championship games or enough to win a championship should be in the champion. Like if, if some people, some people will t- argue that Dan Marino should be in the Hall of Fame because he he only went to one Super Bowl, didn't win one. Like are you are you mind Dan Marino even without a Super Bowl championship is a top five quarterback of all time. Get the fuck out of here with that. Stop your bullshit. All right, <clears throat> but people people have you think of that. But we become we become so stats. Base now in the NFL, especially in the last 5, 10, 15 years with the changing of the guard, the changing of the of the rules, and the way the game is played now, that the the, the stats can make can trick you sometimes. You can make you you can make stats tell some tell a story differently than what it should be. Now, I'm not saying that as the case of Dakota Rivers. He's top. He's number five all time passing. You know, uh, he's definitely has, has had a really really good career. Um, he's, I, I'll say on this one, Phil Rivers, he's definitely in the conversation. He's definitely worthy of the conversation of the debate to have the, the debate. He's worth the debate to the table. People now you can say no to Phil Rivers not being a Hall of Famer, but see people will say Eli Manning is a Hall of Famer when Phil Rivers has a better record than Eli Manning has more yards than Eli Manning and, and vice versa and all that. Eli Manning has, of course, two Super Bowls, and 
They beat the Patriots twice and all that, and that helps his argument. I don't know. I think the one thing I will say to simplify the argument is this, and I'm not saying yes or no on Flip Rivers, but I will say this. If you got to think about it, he's probably not a Hall of Famer. If you got to think about it, he's probably not a Hall of Famer. Not saying he isn't, because I, I'm still in the middle. Because the numbers do bear out well for him. And it is an individual award. It isn't a team award. So the numbers are going to favor that. He didn't go to a Super Bowl. Yes, he did not. Played in a tough conference, though. Let's be real. He played in the era of the Patriots, the greatest dynasty in the history of probably sports. Not as the NFL, sports. I don't know. But that, I will say that if you want to simplify the argument, simplify it to this. If you got to think about it, he's probably not deserving it. I'll say this much. He's not first ballot. Neither is Eli Manning. Drew Brees, however, is first ballot. Whenever he retires, which could be tomorrow. Who knows? I think he's done. But we'll see. None, nothing history yet. So, so unfortunately, we can't, we can't, we can't do the uh, NFL, you know, Big Jim and Kyle. I wasn't, wasn't prepared to do that today. So, we'll probably get them together again during the Super Bowl week. We'll see what happens. Um, but we do have the, we do have championship weekend on the horizon on Sunday, and I, I, I got to tell you, all I like all four teams. All four teams have something I can root for. The Chiefs, defending champions. I love Pat Mahomes. Guys, phenomenal to play with, and I love Andy Reid. I love Andy Reid. I root for Andy Reid last year to win the Super Bowl. The Buffalo Bills. I was a big Bills fan back in the day. My all time for quarterback. Not named Russell Wilson, of course. Is Jim Kelly, and I love Bills Mafia. I love friends of Bills fans. You know, um, the Packers love Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers could use one more title to solidify. One more title for Aaron Rodgers puts him in the top three of five all time, in my opinion. Uh, the Patriots. I'm not Patriots. The Buccaneers. <laughs> Patriots. Holy shit. Even when they're not in the playoffs, they still they still uh, trick me. <laughs> Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and you and you hear Kyle Nash on the, on the podcast. So you'll tell you know this. You know obviously my my affinity with Tom Brady. Wouldn't mind him getting another title. Just to cut, you know why with Tom Brady, I, I don't mind it because he's forty three years old. He can retire and enjoy his life. But I love the fact that even at 43 years old with nothing to prove, with six titles already, he still gives a fuck. I love that about Tom Brady. He still plays each game like it's his last game. He treats week two like the Super Bowl because he cares, because he loves this game on such a human level. So I I respect the shit out of Tom Brady for that. That's for the record. I do. So every, every team here, I have something I can root for. Now, who I think is going to win to to uh, clinch their tip to clip the ticket to the Super Bowl? Uh, let's go to spreads first off. Here, you know, mean spreads. First off, I think the first game is the NFC Championship game. I believe. Let me check real quick and make sure. As of right now, this podcast, uh, the let me see. Hold on. Okay, as of right now, the Green Bay Packers are three and a half point favorites. Over the Buccaneers at Lambeau. That's the 3.05 start on Sunday. Um, you know, I was talking to people leading to the playoffs about Tampa's going to be dangerous. And all I heard was, yeah, they could be dangerous, but I think Green Bay will own them. Well, we're going we're to find out now, aren't we? Huh? <laughs> um, you know, I, again, I don't know who I'm rooting for. I probably, I probably root for the Packers, though, because I want Aaron Rodgers to another ring, possibly. But like I said, I don't want my team Brady get another one. Um, the more I get closer to the game, the more I'm more like the Packers. This I, I feel like this Packers team is different. I feel like after what you know, the draft last you know, this past draft, Packers drafting Jordan Love, pissing off Aaron Rodgers, and you know, all the talk about I, I even said this podcast before the year started that if the Packers crater, Rodgers is finishing Green Bay. Um and yet we're now at the doorstep of another Super Bowl for Aaron Rodgers. So, 
I like the Packers, man. The more I sit in this, the more I sit on this, I, I, I just the Packers. It seems like destined to win this game. It's at home. They're playing phenomenally. Um, it just feels like they, you know, like last year they felt a little fraudulent. This year, not so much. And both both years, thirteen and three to the record. I like Green Bay, honestly. I like Green Bay. Um, the AFC title game was at six forty p.m. on Sunday. The Bills heading to Kansas City. The Chiefs are three right now. They are three point favorites, and the only reason is this line is lower now. We're still waiting to see if Pat Mahomes will play the game. To me, it's this simple. I respect the shit out of the Buffalo Bills. If Pat Mahomes is not the quarterback on Sunday for the Chiefs, if Chad Henney is the quarterback, no disrespect to Chad Henney, of course. The Buffalo Bills are going to run this win this game going away. If Pat Mahomes plays. And is healthy enough to play this game, the Chiefs should win. But I tell you, this Buffalo team is dangerous. Josh Allen's really good. Stephon Diggs has been amazing this year. So it's hard to pick. I don't. We don't know if Pat Mahomes going to play or not. So there you go, right there. I think Pat Mahomes will play. I think the Chiefs will find a way to win this game. But this will be a real close game. In fact, so close. It, I actually it's been a one point game, two point game. I actually like Buffalo on the points. <laughs> I don't know. I went from the points for some reason. Three points. Yeah, I can, I can see this be like a like a twenty six twenty four type of game. We'll see what happens. So anyway, glad to be back on the saddle, man. Glad to be back to doing podcast again. Um, although shout out before I go, my friends the Berniers. You know my co-host Mike Bernier on the Take Three Wrestle Podcast. Him and his wife made us dinner also too. <laughs> Brought over tacos, homemade tacos, which was an incredible way, both chicken and steak. Thank you guys. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Mike. And again, thank you everybody for the prayers, the thoughts, all that. We're back on the mend, back to the grind again tomorrow. Um back to being normal. Don't take life for granted. Seriously. And take care of yourselves. I, one of the things I'm coming out of this too, especially, is prioritizing my health more than anything else. It's important. It's really important. And check out the blog. My blog is back, earnspeaking.net. I'm writing a lot these days. Or on Twitter at EJKristen7. Uh, I guess that is it. So until then, see you guys soon. We're back. Love you guys. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy yourselves and stay positive. Stay up. Love you guys. Take care. Mm-hmm.